Yes. And today is ongoing work that I have been doing with my supervisor David Wedge in the area of cancer genomics. In particular, I'm looking at colorectal cancer, which is the third most common cancer in the UK in both males and females, and the second largest cancer killer after lung cancer. We look at methods for subclonal reconstruction to try to understand how the tumor of each patient has evolved. This is based on clonal evolution theory, which describes cancer as an evolutionary process of clonal expansion, genetic diversification driven by somatic cell mutations, and clonal selection. Over the lifetime of an individual, different mutations occur and accumulate in the DNA. These are somatic mutations, so as opposed to germline mutations, these are not inherited. Instead, they occur due to things like environmental factors or due to errors in DNA replication during cell division. The majority of these somatic mutations will not have any impact on the individual. However, a small number of these, known as driver mutations, will uh, provide the cell with some growth advantage or make it better suited to its environment, therefore leading to what's known as clonal expansion. We see here in the diagram an example of these subclones represented by each color, where the dots where they originate represent the SNPs. These are uh, the single nucleotide variants, the mutations. As well as this, we've got the variability coming from the CNAs, which are the copy number alterations. So we know how usually we have uh, two copies of all of our genetic information. Um, however, often some sections will have these copy number events. So we may end up having three, four, or even more copies. Or on the other hand, some sections may be deleted. Both SNFs and CNAs are two very important sources of genetic variability that play an important role in disease and that we need to be able to account for for understanding tumor evolution. The first step for our subclonal reconstruction is to do the copy number calling to be able to identify these copy number segments. Um, the copy number caller that we used in the lab is called Battenberg, and I have been working on adapting this to make it work for targeted sequencing without a much normal sample. Once we've got uh, the copy number calls, we uh, do our subclonal reconstruction by trying to cluster the mutations into groups. What we do is to look at the positions for each sample where we have identified a mutation and we calculate an estimate of their CCF. The path of each SNF is its variant allele frequency, which tells us the frequency in which this mutation appears with respect to the wild type allele. However, if we were to cluster the SNFs directly on the path, this could not be accurate since it's also dependent on the purity and the copy number. Therefore, what we do is to cluster this CCF, which is the cancer cell fraction, the proportion of cancer cells carrying the mutation. The CCF of one corresponds to clonal mutations. These are carried by every single cancer cell in the tumor, therefore they must have happened at the very beginning. Whereas those mutations with a smaller CCF are carried by only a subset of cells and therefore must have occurred later on. Uh, as well as these factors, we also need to take into account that the frequency in which we observe the mutation further depends on the sequencing variability across the genome, which will affect how many mutant reads we, uh, we will observe. Then we model the number of mutant reads as the number of successes of a binomial distribution with probability p. This probability depends on the true CCF pi. So as I mentioned earlier, we are able to get an estimate of this CCF. However, we don't know its true value. The true CCF of each mutation, pi i, is modeled with the Dirichlet process. The idea is that since draws from the DP are discrete, multiple mutations will get assigned to the same cluster. By doing give sampling, we iteratively update this true CCF, the locations of our subclones, theta C, the cluster assignment sets, and the weights omega, which represent the number of mutations that get assigned to each cluster. Once we have found the positions of these subclones, we are able to reconstruct the phylogenetic trees of each sample. Since we know that a higher CCF means uh, that these mutations occurred earlier and those with a lower CCF must have occurred later on. 
So we end up with trees looking something like this, that we are then able to combine by putting together the trees from all the different samples into a set of combined rankings. And we do this uh, by using the uh, Plucket Loose model for rankings. Uh, moreover, we use this uh, peel mix package, which feeds a mixture of Plucket Loose models. And from this, we are able to identify different groups of patients that have different evolutionary trajectories. From the preliminary results, we seem to have been able to identify a first group of patients that has mutations only in those key drivers, such as APC carriers or TB53, and a second group of samples that additionally has mutations in uh, mismatch repair genes, and also contained all those samples uh, that were classified as microsatellite unstable. 